Hi guys, in the last set of tutorials I showed you how you can actually set up Ubuntu Desktop as a web server and in this video I'll just be going into a bit more detail on how you can actually do this on an Ubuntu server so I'll be running Ubuntu Server 12.4 and as well as that I'll be going into a little bit more detail of how you can go about hosting multiple websites of the same PC so the main thing, uh, the first thing we need to do is go over to Ubuntu and download the server. So you can go to Ubuntu.com and go to download. Then go to Ubuntu server and start download. Um, you will need to choose whether you are a 32-bit user or a 64. If you're not sure, then play it safe and go with 32. It should be the same installation procedure, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. So once you've done that, go ahead and click start download and that should start the download. There will be a link in the description of how you can go ahead and bear this to a USB disk if you wanted to install it from a USB. Or you can go ahead and bear it to a disk if you wanted to do it that way. To speed things up, I won't be downloading this. I'll just go straight over to the insula installation procedure. The first window you should get is asking you uh, which language you want to run the installer on. So uh, you can choose your language, I'm going to be selecting English. And then we want to select install Ubuntu server. I will be installing this on a virtual machine um, just for recording quality. It's a lot easier to do on here than it is to record it off a camera or something like that if you're installing it on a PC or server. So once you've done that, you can then select your language again, which is English in my case, and you need to select your country. So that's United Kingdom. It obviously, if you're in America or somewhere else, then you would select your own location. Um, once you're on this page, you need to choose what keyboard layout you got. So uh, mine's English again, and extended one keys. Just to speed up the video a bit as well, I will be pausing the video so that you don't have to keep watching the installation procedure, and you can just carry it, and it'll just carry on when you need to do anything. So we now need to set the host name for the P, uh, for the Ubuntu server. This is just what you want the server to be called. So for this, I'll be calling it Wilson 18 Server. Obviously, you might want to change this to something like web server or anything to fit in with your current network. It's a lot easier if it is unique to that particular machine. Once you've done that, go ahead and click continue or press the enter key. Now you need to select the name of the user. I'm just going to setting this as Wilson 18. You can go ahead and name it whatever you're calling it. Next, you need to set the username for the account. Again, I'm leaving that as Wilson18. And now you need to choose your password. It's usually more secure if you choose a longer password, so therefore it will get guessed. But as this is only for tutorial purposes, I'm going to be using a quite easy one to remember, just to speed things up a bit. You need to re-enter that password. And now it's asking if you want to encrypt your home directory. I'm going to be saying no and if you are an experienced user, which you probably aren't because you won't watch in this video, but if you are an experienced user, then you might not want to. Uh, you might want to encrypt it. Um, this just means that if you encrypt it, you won't be able to get any of your files back if something happens to the server. It is a bit more secure, but if anything happens to it, then you've lost everything. So I'm just going to be choosing not to encrypt the home folder. Right, now it's asking for your time zone. This should automatically select the right place, but if it doesn't, then you will need to go ahead and click no and change that. Right, for this, I'm just going to be using a guided use and tight disk and selecting the full space for the hard drive. Now it's just asking if, you want, if you're if you sure that the changes you've selected are correct and if so, would you like to write the change to the disk? This way just click yes. 
Next, you need to set the HTTP proxy server information. This is just in case you need to use a proxy server to actually gain access to the internet. If not, you can go ahead and just click enter. The next thing, it will, it will be asking you if you'd like to install security updates automatically. Um, I would recommend installing the security updates automatically. This just means that if there's any security risks with Ubuntu server or anything else, then it will automatically install the updates and it just makes it a little bit easier for yourself. The next thing we need to do is to choose what we want the server to do. In this case, I'll just be setting it as a LAMP server. If you have any other needs, then you can go ahead and choose them here. However, I will not be explaining about the other methods. Once you've done, go down to LAMP server and press the spacebar to select it, and then click continue. We now need to choose a password for the MySQL root user. And we'll be asked to repeat the password again for security reasons. Next, we'll be asked if we want to install the Grub bootloader on the hard disk. Uh, we just need to click yes for this. And now the installation is complete. Click continue to finish. So that's it for this video, uh, in the next video I'll be showing you how you can actually set a static IP address on Ubuntu server and from that I will then be t explaining how you can go ahead and install PHP MyAdmin if you require it. So thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you again in the next set of videos. If you like the video then please subscribe and like. If you didn't like it then comment below and let us know why and I'm, I can try and help you out with it. And if you've got any other questions again comment below and I'll try and help you out with it. Make sure you check out our website as well as there will be a written guide for how you can do all this in case you didn't want to watch a video. So again thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.